1908 by Thomas Bendelow. Thomas Bendelow is, is widely known as the Johnny Appleseed of golf course architecture. He literally went up and down the East Coast uh, designing properties and he would do them in a matter of two or three days. And it, was, it wasn't much more than a stake for here's a tee, here's a green, here's a bunker. And so in a couple days, he would have designed your golf course and then moved on. Audubon uh, traditionally is known for being a park-like setting because it was built in 1908. We have a ton of trees and it's just a fun golf course to walk. Uh, our members really enjoy coming back and playing the same thing over and over again. Uh, you can't say that for every place and it's not that we're dramatically different, but it just gives you this park-like feeling with the surrounding area that's got the airport, that's got the trains and all that, and you can come here and kind of unwind, enjoy your afternoon, and then, and then get back to your, to your work schedule. So we're, we're located in the transition zone, uh, which is, uh, it can be a difficult place to, uh, to grow and maintain grass. Uh, and really the reason being are the extremes, both in the summer and the winter time. Uh, and so we have a wide variety of grasses on our, our, our property here. We, uh, we have zoysia teas and fairways, uh, and then we have bent grass putting greens, uh, and then our roughs are uh, fescue, bermuda, uh, kind of a hodgepodge of things that come together, and they'll all do well at different times of the year, and so the challenge becomes making them kind of all look good at the same time. So in 2006, we went through a major renovation here at the property where we renovated uh, greens, uh, fairways, bunkers, uh, and that incorporated a lot of rough. And so it was really one of the first times that we strongly introduced uh, turf type tall fescues onto the property. We sodded all of our greens complexes and bunker faces with it. Just had a lot of success early with that. Uh, and so then that's enabled us to continue with uh, the things that we're doing now, this overseeding, because of the success we saw with it early there in 2006. And so uh, each fall we'll come in, aerify the roughs, power seed into those, and it gives us just good density, uh, good color, good definition, good contrast against that zoysia grass in the winter months. And then it's also fairly low maintenance in the summertime. It doesn't require a lot of fungicides, uh, water, uh, and some things like that. So we found it to be very successful for our property. We mow at two and three quarters of an inch. So we like to try to keep that high. That takes the stress off the plant. But it also provides uh, a lot of rigidity. The balls tend to sit up uh, a lot more, which our golfers really enjoy. Uh, so it's kind of a win-win. From us, it's a, it's a lower maintenance uh, perspective. And then for them, it's a, it's a better playability uh, type situation. It, it really holds up well on these faces. Uh, where golfers are entering and exiting out of the bunker, so that's always, uh, that's always beneficial for us. We do have to come back uh, every couple of weeks, as I mentioned with that fly mo, to, to edge them out because it is so aggressive, it can have a tendency to grow down for you a little bit. There's no question that I would uh, encourage other courses to, to utilize turf type tall fescues on their properties in this region. Again, we, we've just had a lot of success with it over the years and I think, uh, I think others would have the same.